So the other one was so spontaneous, no it was time, so whatever, and I, it didn't work. And now it's going to look all formal and whatever. Now you're, yeah, now you're now I got to really think about what I'm going to say. Yeah. See what pictures I have. <laughs> Three naked kids in a tub. Should that not be on <laughs> no, this film? That's good. No, the, the big thing, and you know, um, since we talked to you... Is that on, by the way? Yeah. Okay, it's okay. going. We're rolling. Um, since we last talked, we were able to catch up with Butch Rigby, okay, um, and also David Ford um, down at sure. and YJ's, and um, you know, interestingly, uh, you know, David talked about about the site a lot as someone who lives down here and has like his own personal neighborhoods and right. walks the streets a lot, you know, um, and and Butch. Butch was really interesting because he was talking about the site in in ways that I thought like were had a lot more overlap to the ways that you were thinking about it. I think Butch had Butch has been looking at that site for so long and sort of has done smaller developments. And he mentioned that maybe you and you and he had even had conversations about it in the um, in the past. So it just continues to be fascinating about different people's you know perspectives. But I guess some of the high points while we we yeah, have like about twenty minutes here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, some of the high points would be like um, maybe uh, you know some thought thoughts again about what what you've looked at in terms of being highest and best <laughs> use to use kind of developers language for the sure. for the site what what might work and what what might not and even since you know even since the the uh, conversations we've had there's there's been a you know a um, recognized interest from UMKC perhaps in the right. site and right. so just maybe getting you to elaborate on some of all of those things. Yeah and I'd also be interested in <coughs> uh, Butch's and David I mean I'd be interested too in what they think and I after our conversation I've thought more about it and yeah. looked out there and just even thought of um, you know reuse of buildings when I was at the uh, Performing Arts Center opening and stuff and looking at it a little bit differently and things that at least in my mind, I was thinking um, I just can't envision a long-term re reuse scenario. Um, some of the buildings didn't, didn't look, you know, as bad. Maybe in their current condition, they need work. But just in terms of a template, if uh, you know, smaller, smaller scale restaurants or other shops or things wanted to go in, there's some of those buildings that might lend themselves to be able to stay. But uh, you know, I guess in general. Um, you know, we've been thinking about, it's a, <clears throat> it was always kind of a high visibility site, great highway access, people coming in, great access, I think, also from within the neighborhood and 17th Street, but, you know, on Broadway, you know, one of the great things about being down here is just the so many different ways in and out of pretty much anywhere, you know, um, there's not just one one way to get in. So, you know, we've, we've been pretty open about um, <clears throat> office use, residential use, but a real mixed use project. It's a big piece of ground, but it's always had this um, prominence because it's on the corner, corner of the highway and corner of the interchange sort of from a, from a uh, <clears throat> drive people to the site type mentality. But um, especially with the Performing Arts Center, um, in the integration of that, and you mentioned the UMKC thing. I mean, I think that opens up a lot of other um, different kinds of possibilities to do with the site and probably enhances the, the prominence of whatever is going to be done there it has just a different <clears throat> level of feel and interest and in, honestly new interested parties. So before you had neighborhood interests and maybe your own interests, now you have people who have been invested $400 million across the street in a real iconic, really important way, who are also interested in what happens across the street and probably um, have a lot more um, say if they want to um, and influence if they want to about how certain things get shaped. Do you, the, <coughs> excuse me. the site, I mean, we mentioned UMKC <laughs> right. and, and just like maybe, maybe, get a little further out in orbit and just sort of see that as a typology. Do you think that site lends itself to an art centric sort of use at an institutional scale? I mean, do you think that's a viable use for those, those several blocks? Yeah. I mean, at the biggest picture, I think, um, university colleges, um, 
that kind of young people lifestyle, people out at night, people on the streets. I mean, I think we need that so bad down here sort of in general. And I think, um, you know, the arts district in the crossroads, but also the performing arts center kind of landing there, which um, a lot of debate, including <clears throat> here, certainly initially wanted to keep things contained, you know, build the density out. But now that it is there and it is so prominent, I mean, I think it um, it lends itself perfectly to, um, to cater kind of to both sides, you know, the arts side, but also to the just the university side. Because um, so having the opportunity to have um, 800 to 1,000 people is what I think they're saying um, is pretty unique. And without the Performing Arts Center there, I'm not, and not that things wouldn't evolve. I'm not sure that that would become such a possibility. And if you think for, of, for the year 2011, <clears throat> yeah, and yeah. If you think of the um, the thing of the people that really need to rally behind something like that for it to actually happen, and people to fund it, and um, some donors to be interested, probably in a higher profile project, pulling that together, um, I don't think it would be possible without people wanting to somehow then be associated with a performing arts center, yeah. not just the university, but whatever donors are actually going to bring in part of the, I guess, $75 million is it, that it's going to take to make that happen. So, Yeah, that, that's a significant, significant project. Yeah. You know, the other, the other thing we've been walking, <clears throat> we've been just at one, one thing we've, we've really tried so far, the weather has certainly lent itself to this, but we've been walking around mm -hmm. and, Side a lot and walk in the different neighborhoods. And the other day, we were cut short by a, a pending storm that ended up catching us. This was about two weeks ago. And we mm -hmm. ended up at, at Los Tules to, to stay dry and, and enjoy some beer and, and Mexican uh -huh. food. But one thing we did do is cross Broadway and then looped around and came back, um, maybe on Wyandotte. Mm -hmm. um, and while it's easy, it seems easy for us to talk a lot about the connection to the west side and the crossroads, <laughs> just just um, in terms of in terms of sort of foot traffic and and even vehicular traffic, it's a little counterintuitive given the convention center and the interstate mm -hmm. to really think about that site's link to downtown. <clears throat> and out of everyone we've talked to, you're kind of our sole downtown mm -hmm. constituent. Right. So, what are your thoughts? Like, how could that site help connect? Um, downtown to the west side, the, the the crossroads. Maybe in a way, I always fantasize like, what if the interstate wouldn't have been built mm -hmm. there? What kind of flow would the city have had? And and this site seems to be kind of a, a, a linchpin in that in that fantasy or in that conversation. So, what what can be done in terms of development strategies or architecture that that bring downtown back into the mix right. too? Because because right now, especially especially on the western edge. It feels sort of brutally chopped off from, from the rest of the it city. It is, and it's harder. And you know, the, our convention center is kind of a blank wall convention center. You also have the south end of the convention center with the loading docks are there. You know, so you have more impediments. And then, and then the loop um, freeway system has always been. I don't know that it needs to be, but it's so unfriendly to cross that it's always been this uh, at least pedestrian. Um, Kind of no road, man's land, no man's land, kind of roadblock impeding um, the two sides, and which you know I think in general is a bad thing. Um, what might be good about it is it in general keeps kind of low density rehab type of things in a different kind of neighborhood, um, and a more high density, high rise kind of neighborhood here, and I, I think that can. That can work together if you make those connections a little better. But I think what you said is true. I mean, that project kind of, you know, at the hinge point or whatever, nexus or whatever word you want to use, of those uh, two worlds really can play an important role in bringing the north-south, you know, in addition to the east-west um, together. And the reason why, <clears throat> one reason why I think it can happen is you really have, um, for the most part, um, a lot of the amenities uh, within the loop that uh, if you put housing there, if you put um, if you put a hotel, if you put office there, whatever, even the art center itself, um, if people are going to eat, they're going to drink, they're going to sleep, do whatever, um, they got to find those amenities. And, and just the 
unfortunate pace of how slow things happen around here, for the amount of amenities that are already created here, that we're already invested in, to show up over there, um, is going to take years. And not just because um, of pace, but just the number of people buzzing around in a daytime atmosphere and a nighttime that are, that are, you know, still half of what we need around here, but that are that are here, and that you know, if you look at the daytime office population and things like that over there, are still you know really small. So it's hard enough to support a retailer here where you've got sort of fifty thousand people during the daytime, and you know, I don't know what it would be on the other side of the freeway. So I mean, I think my people are going to be coming back and forth for the amenities, and so to me, the question is, can you make those links? pedestrian friendly and I think the, the bridge work and the artwork and actually creating sidewalks you can walk on I mean something you know the things that you guys have been involved in are very helpful it's still a long noisy unfriendly stretch uh, to go across so um, you know the ideas of covering the loop and doing other things I think would be helpful those may not be happening anytime soon and so um, you know but I, I so I think the amenities on both sides are, are what's going to drive people actually walking back and forth. When I can say, you know, going down to like Bulldog or wherever, you know, for lunch, we would always, uh, from here, get in our car and drive there, which is a totally ridiculous concept. Because it's only, what, five blocks? <laughs> yeah. I mean, what, what city or context would you really get your car out? But we do that, and you know, now that there's amenities and interesting things along the way, um, you may not be stopping to shop or stopping to do anything else, but because those things exist, um, you know, we gladly walk that. So, I mean, I think it's the amenities that fill in these buildings that are going to sort of bring people back and forth. Yeah. Wind of way, same so, a little bit of a trickier question, because um, another thing that's, that, that has come up is, um, uh, and, 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 and not, not, even, not, even a, not even in a, in a polarized way mm -hmm. or a, a one uh, one way of looking at it, because I think everyone's recognized, like the, the, the PIA, for example, is is completely embraced mm -hmm. in the crossroads, especially by by artists that have been able to leverage that to stay in the crossroads and continue to, to, to make art. Um, but but other other tools like the, the TIFF that the Performing Arts Center has mm -hmm. and, and how that overlaps into the site. Mm -hmm. What? So like the, the idea of even a, like a master developer for several blocks runs counterintuitive mm -hmm. to probably a lot of grassroots sensibilities on the west side or, or even those that exist in in the uh, in the crossroads so what are the what are the pros and cons in your mind being in that role at this right. point of being a master developer <clears throat> what what traps are there that you could fall into what um, you know how, how can it how can it be spun that, that this is actually a, a very positive thing right. <clears throat> I think that on the con side, I mean, I can see that um, the side of hey, let things just sort of germinate, organically grow, have um, multiple people doing multiple projects, and you know, don't have something that's you know, either too corporate or too planned. And you know, I think um, you know, you can look at <clears throat> Power and Light, which I think um, on a number of levels is very successful. Um, um, but I can see that on other levels, you're taking eight blocks and it's planned and it looks a certain way and as opposed to evolving over a hundred years. Um, but I think the problem with that in our particular city is um, just the pace and the, the lack of density and the lack of, um, of, of, of growth over a short period of time so that, you know, for... 40 years out this window, we had sort of let everybody do their own thing and everybody do their own thing was one of the reasons why it was empty parking lots and haunted houses and just an environment people didn't want to be part of um, because it really required too much dollars and planning and comprehensive thinking for any of the 50 or 60 individual owners to kind of do themselves so at the end of the day nothing happened. I think Crossroads is a little bit differently where you have different where you have um, buildings that are good buildings, buildings that um, already have kind of 
people in them already have, um, I think, a lot of interest. And so in our at a manageable level where people can take individual projects. Just because of the scale. Yeah, I think the scale is different. Um, and um, the hole that was dug here, uh, figuratively, I guess, and literally, just at how much deterioration had occurred, at least in my mind. Um, and I know, you know, Crossroads now is much stronger than it was 10, 15, 20 years. You know, people might argue the same there, but the um, the um, the hole that was dug down here was so much worse. I mean, so on, on this site, um, where you have an opportunity to create a lot of density, if you believe in density, which I do, and I, you know, for us to be um, a vibrant atmosphere, I mean, I fully subscribe, we need at least twice as many people down here as we have now. Um, so, you know, we may have one little neat little building project where 20 people live, and that may be cool in itself, but to really change um, how people view the city and operate with it and retail stores coming in and a restaurant opening up, you know, that, that one little project is part of the solution, but in itself isn't going to do it. But I think you really need um, a larger planned area, and then it just gets into how you execute it and what type of uh, people um, want to be there and what type of people you can <coughs> attract to be there. Uh, so, I mean, I think, so it would be a terrible thing if we took the river to 31st Street and just planned the whole thing and it was all done at one time. I mean, you know, so, but to take a couple blocks like in this situation interspersed with very small individual projects, I think is is the best chance for getting um, getting something of more size and scale and people uh, done. I, yeah, I guess it just gets into the nuance of kind of different levels of sensitivity that you can you know, pull that off. Right. And I, to me, that's, um, that's who you are and how you deal with people along the way and how you include people or don't or how you're my way or the highway. And um, so that gets into those individual dynamics that I guess, and hopefully we'll we'll find out how we how we handle it. You know. Let me see the time. Do you all have a, any closing closing I've questions got, here? You got, I mean, I've got ten minutes or so. Okay. Ten after. I mean, you may not have more, but if you do, I've got some more time. How do you go about figuring out what is needed? Like, how do you, if you were to actually plan the development of this area? How do you go about figuring out what those needs are and how do you address them? either the restaurant or, you know, or a residential, how do you make that, how do you make that research happen, I guess? Right. I mean, um, you know, some of it's market research, like mm -hmm. you look, like on the residential, you can look at um, downtown occupancy is in the high 90s right, right now, so it's like 98% or something of everything that's rented, including condos that are rented. And you, so you just say, okay, hey, there, there is a demand here because mm -hmm. that's kind of at a level that, um, that, um, you saying people want more, but you also you combat that against what prices people are willing to pay, and mm -hmm. and what we've had a problem here of so far is either somebody taking the risk on new build that people will pay significantly more, or um, the reality is of whether the people just at the end of the day won't pay significantly more to be in our environment as it is, and so that's where mm -hmm. incentives and other things come in come into play but so you you look at the market studies and then some other things are just kind of gut level um you just um, see an opportunity or want but you still got to prove it out with your with your study so you think there's need for a secondary hotel you know maybe not convention center hotel but some other smaller boutique hotel and you think there's a need for residential and you go prove it out um i'd say also um, we're out marketing our sites to office users and retailers and, you know, perhaps 99% of the time they're not interested, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, eventually uh, like a corporate office user, um, mm -hmm. things like that say, yeah, we'd like to explore that site with you. So I mean, I'd say it kind of comes in all, mm -hmm. all forms and shapes, but we're out there trying to trying to make something happen versus uh, more or less waiting for the phone to ring um, to, you know, to, for somebody to tell us what the use is. Now, like we mentioned the conservatory project, I mean, that, you know, wasn't something we had on our radar and um, 
but that was something that they had on their radar. And so that was more them approaching us and other sites as well, but about uh, you know, the possibility and its association with the Kaufman Center and things like that. So kind of multiple ways. I don't know if that answers. Well, that does, uh, yeah. but, uh, I'd be interested in what uh, David and Butch, you know, their different perspectives also. Yeah, it's, I mean, we're, we're by, let's see, Friday, we're saying, yeah. today's Monday. That's why we're <laughs> rushing in here. Okay, no problem. Mm -hmm. By Friday, we will have done these, um, we're calling them narrative threads, uh -huh. but they're, they're kind of four to five minute videos that have all of your all's different voices okay. that are kind of creating a, a broader conversation mm -hmm. about the site. About the potential, about things to be careful about, about um, so yeah, I mean like you know, David, David was talking a lot about something as as specific and simple as like streetscaping, mm -hmm. like how important that mm -hmm. actually really is, and differences between urban streetscaping and suburban streetscaping, mm -hmm. and you know where it's appropriate to do. So you know he really dove into mm -hmm. some details, but. You know, in my mind that had a lot to do with him walking his dog every day. You know, he really notices that kind of stuff. Right. Whereas people maybe that drive in from Johnson County for a performance get out of their car, or maybe they're in the parking garage. Right. Okay. They don't. They see it as they go by, but they don't experience right. it. You know, on a day in day out basis on right. foot. Right. You know, so there's that kind of um, you know kind of top down from mm -hmm. way far up designing, and then there's kind of thinking about the people that are using it as their neighborhood. Right. Which which was an interesting thing for David to be pointing out because our site kind of can start to bridge into both mm -hmm. categories. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's a it could be a larger scale sort of institutional thing. Mm -hmm. um, it could be sort of an amenities package that's geared towards the the performing arts center, but then that misses all the details of mm -hmm. of kind of how na how the neighborhoods actually mm -hmm. would use it as an urban space. Right. You know, so. And then, you know, Butch, Butch was talking a lot about, um, you know, his, his thoughts about, you know, film row and the right. history of filmmaking and the potential for that sort of almost be a theme based thing at one point on the, on the site. Um, mm -hmm. but, but in talking about that, he said a lot of interesting things about, about scale and about typologies and where on the site that might kind of make sense and how that might step down to 17th street to become right. something right. else. And. So I mean, you know, all of those, all of those things were at, at play. Um, so maybe, maybe one question I would have after just kind of rambling on was, mm -hmm. um, like, if you could challenge the studio now to uh, kind of push the push the envelope a little bit with the site, how how might you how might you prompt us to to do so? I mean, what are some of the kind of edges of what's possible that we could explore the periphery of what's possible? Well, as we talked a little bit before, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty open and I'm kind of excited to hear what you guys come with. Um, in, you know, in my mind, I think, I think it's big enough. It's a big enough piece of ground to do a lot of different things. You know, I don't know then that sometimes you try to please everybody and you please nobody. So, you know, it probably has to have some consistency to it. But I mean, you know, I can envision things up by like where Denny's is and that are literally on the corner of a off ramp to a major <coughs> um, highway that's also, so you're bounded by the highway, you're bounded by the loading docks, you know, having a totally different character and feel from what's going on along 17th Street and this east-west connection and which, which is really your closest area to the other, you know, two and three story uh, buildings. And then, you know, even uh, residential, single family type stuff. And so um, I think there's something to be said for as you move down the hill, down uh, to 17th Street, that um, not only the height and things may change, but that I think the character can change. And the character, um, again, I think could be uh, very different at the... Uh, at the south end, I think you know. Even if the conservatory idea takes hold, um, I don't think that's something that has to envelop the whole site either. Uh, just um, you know, there's a lot of space to do to do d different things, and um, you know, back to the, the notion of preserving any of the additional or the existing buildings. Um, you know, it'd be interesting to see if from David Ford on up, if you guys find 
if there really is value in what's there, or if it's more or less a character and streetscape orientation of something new, but, um, you know, everybody would just assume, sort of, quote, get rid of the things that are there. And again, that doesn't mean if uh, the Mexican restaurant's people's favorite hangout, that the Mexican restaurant can't fit into a new scheme, but whether, um, whether you're really preserving what's there, or if you are starting with a clean slate, and it's just kind of, it is planned, but it's kind of how you, how you plan it out. Um, but I mean, I don't know. I don't know anything specific because we're, um, you know, we're, I think we're open to the mixed uses that seem to make sense. Uh, uh, but for something to happen there, it's really got to have the, the demand side saying that hey, at this location, um, this is something that really works. Otherwise, it'll be it'll be a, a good planning effort, and not you know, not a project in reality. We've got plenty of those in Kansas. Yeah, we do. Yeah. And you you know, wait, I'm, we all in our work. I mean, you got to do twenty or thirty things to get one thing to hit. So you know, we do do a lot of planning in our world, and we do have a lot of plans in this office or in the city as a whole sitting on the shelf. So you do have to do those things, but um, that's going to take something that entices the real user to be there for, for it to happen. Well, I was, I was sort of excited to hear about UMKC's interest in the site. And just sort of, I think it, I think it's pretty timely with our studio's interest in the site. So right. hopefully, hopefully as things go, there'll be a diversity of, of interests and, and you know, if you, if you call them market interests or, or just sort of community interests that, that collide in the right way for, something interesting to actually happen right yeah um, it holds a so. holds a lot of a lot of potential obviously so. yeah and i think you know back to the nature and the character if something like that were to happen it sets up a different and probably more interesting character i think for the rest of the site so whether again you're talking about hotels or other types of retail and shops that want to be around students and arts-oriented students and things like that, different from whatever, if it's, a, uh, if it's a law firm office building and the types of places that they want to be around a law firm office building. So, Well, that's exactly right. Just because it's a university use doesn't mean it can't still be a mixed use. Right, you know, right. Um, often, often it's universities that bring some very pleasant, um, pleasant mixes of yeah. uses. Yeah, yeah. So... Okay, well, we'll we'll let you get get okay. back at it. I know you All said right. you said Monday is a bear, so yeah, this week's kind of a bear. But, um, yeah, thanks again, and so nothing from the sidewalk just came out. It was just too noisy or whatever. I think it was like every third word was That's understandable. Right. Yeah. I think well, there were a lot of big trucks going the, by. The, the ladies that were sitting next to us uh -huh. were just loud. <laughs> oh, so you could hear that better. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. Okay. Every word of their conversation. <laughs> All right. Well, John, thanks. thanks. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thanks a lot.